Journey Production Studios. My name is Keith, and today we're going to be unboxing the HDMI to SDI 6G um, converter. I have an HDMI to 3G converter right here, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. I use two of those, and um, now this is my first SDI um, 6G converter, and they make two of these. They make the SD. Uh, SDI 6G to HDMI converter. They also make this one, which is the HDMI to SDI um, 6G converter. So they're both 6G, which lets you do up to 4K. And we'll talk about the specs in a minute that are on the box. But I want to tell you quickly why I got this. And that is so I can come out of my ES, EOS R Canon and I can convert it to um, 6G SDI. And then I can take it into my HyperDeck Mini and I can record um, 6G um, SDI inputs. And that means I can record 4K. So how will I use that? Well, anytime I want to be remote and I want to shoot and not have my camera time out, because right now, even the EOS R after I hit record, it's going to time out right at that 30 minute mark. You know the story. It doesn't shut off when I have it powered and I'm just using it as a feed into my ATM mini. But I've learned the hard way that it will shut off if I don't record um, out of the HDMI port. The other thing is um, it doesn't have the same compression coming out of the HDMI port so I can get 4.2.2 uncompressed HDMI out. And I wanna record the highest quality of that. I know I could get an Atomos recorder. I could also get um, the higher end uh, monitors and record to them from Blackmagic Design. But I already have the HyperDeck Mini. I got it so that I can play graphics live, um, fly in graphics with the Alpha Channel. I also wanna use the recording side of it and it has an SDI uh, 6G input, and so I want to uh, record um, that quality. And so this is the adapter that's gonna help me do that. So let's unbox it. I haven't even broken the seal yet, but I am all set up to use it, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. So there you have it out of the box. Show it to that camera as well. Um, hopefully you don't have any glare, and let's open it up and see what's inside. Blackmagic doesn't spend a ton of money on their boxing or the things that go in it, which keeps the, the price down. But there you have empty box and close that up, set that out right there on display. And then we'll open this up. So you have the different adapters. So it does come with the power supply. Um, and uh, so we'll be plugging that in here in a minute. I will be using, and it's in a nice little Ziploc container. I will be using obviously the one from the United States, which is right here. Um, but these just plug into the, uh, um, the power supply and we'll do that now. Open this up. Also in the box is the paperwork. And um, so you have the free um, downloadable um, DaVinci Resolve and the beta's out for 17 and it's looking pretty cool. Um, so you can download that for free. Um, then they have stickers. I'm not sticking these on anything else, um, but there you go. And um, then the software installer, it does come with some software and we'll demo that here before the end of the video. Um, again, Trying to get this camera to focus right now. It's being stubborn. There you go. And then a little manual from Blackmagic Design. And um, it gives you the basic information um, that you're going to need to download primarily. And then some really cool pictures and that you can download the manual. Um, and um, Blackmagic Design... Black Magazine Design has some great products. And if you haven't been using their products, I would suggest that you dive in. So we'll now connect on this little adapter and it comes with a little handy cover here, just plastic you can take off. And now you would snap in um, the power adapter for your area. And on the other side, 
you have that kind of adapter. So this is a dedicated power supply. You will have to plug this one in. Um, as far as I know, it is not um, S, I mean, USB compatible powering, and we'll look more into that. So you have dip switches, and the dip switches let you um, change different features in the software. We'll show you that. You have um, an SD out, a double one, so you have a fail safe. So if you're converting from HDMI and one cable gets disconnected, it should automatically switch over to the other cable from what I understand. What I did get excited about is that I will be able to feed audio into the SDI. So why is that important? Well, in here in my studio, um, I use, and here's those two adapters right here, and you have left, left and right audio out, and you can also go in um, AES and um, EBU, um, for those of you that understand that language. But these are um, mono jacks, so you could come directly out of your Rodecaster Pro like I have here in the studio. So I did a video on my Rodecaster Pro and how I use the HOSA switcher. So I come out of my, um, my Rodecaster Pro into my subwoofer. Um, it has crossover built into it, comes back out of that as an output that goes to my HOSA um, switch. And then I have um, the ability to go to my ATM mini um, to feed like this channel I'm feeding right now using the Rode pod mic. And that's through my Rodecaster Pro. But how do I feed my 4K video, the audio and not have to sync it up later? Well, when I'm live somewhere here in the studio or live out it remotely, I'll be able to take that same HOSA switch and feed it um, into um, the HDMI channel. That way I don't have to put any mics on my camera. I can use my regular lapel mics. I can use my regular Rode um, shotgun mic, or I can use my pod mics if I'm doing a podcast all through the Rodecaster Pro, and I'll just feed the HDMI signal, that clean audio from the channel, the stereo feed, and then I'll have a good quality stereo feed inside the HDMI signal, which will be recorded in my ATM Mini Pro or directly um, to my HyperDeck Mini, depending on how I go. And then I'll also be able to have a backup recording on my SD card, my micro SD card in my Rodecaster Pro. And the Rodecaster Pro will record every single channel, including the music channel. And it's a great tool to correct some volume levels and things later, or you can just use the stereo track that you've recorded. So I love that feature. So again, up close, you have right, and left quarter inch audios in this channel. The left channel would be what you would use if you're going to feed a AES or EBU um, analogs. And then you have the HDMI. Again, I'm going to be feeding this from my um, my EOS R into my um, HyperDeck. So I'm going to go HDMI out. And you can see right now that I have a little left angle cable. And so I purchased that just recently from Amazon. And it's a um, uh, left angle HDMI cable from Mini, which is what you have to have to come out of the EOS R. And then it's a left angle. So instead of blocking my all of my little screen if I'm vlogging, I now only block just a little bit because it cuts down and out of the way. So I'll come out of that into this input right here. This will then convert it to... SDI, I only have one input on my HyperDeck Mini, so I'll have to have one solid good cable. So again, you'll use the dip switches and the software that's included. So we're going to um, take a look at this a little bit closer. They're all set up on my desk, and um, I have the power supply in next to that. I have the SDI out. I'm using the second SDI out. Um, it will not down convert. So as I'm recording 4K, you see here on the screen, 2160p by 29.97 frames per second. We're 27 seconds in. Um, I can't monitor unless I buy a down converter. But if I switch my camera over to 1080p and record at 1080p, then um, my um, port keys monitor will um, read the uh, display. 
So um, I want to actually go through this HDMI to SDI 6G converter, mini converter by Blackmagic Design to not only record on my HyperDeck 4K, but I'd like to just keep it in the loop. So when I go to record um, 1080p, I'll be able to um, go from the SDI out, convert it in one of my mini converters right here um, because it'll be an uh, HD, it'll be a 1080p signal, then my um, SDI to HDMI converter will work perfectly fine. So I'll disconnect one of those or buy another one and um, have a third way of getting into my ATM Mini Pro. So I can do a backup recording on the HyperDeck and I also can do a uh, recording on the other um, uh, HDMI uh, the ATM mini when I want to record or if I'm streaming live, I can use this camera. So you can see right now it's about the timeout. It's giving me a warning. It should automatically switch over to disc number one. And so this is one of the reasons why I love the HyperDeck. And the reason I'm using it is because of its ability to do that. I also have two audio channels right and left. And if you watched my last video on the Hosta switcher, I have my, um, and I talked about that earlier in the video, I have that so that I can switch between audio to this device, audio to my in-studio speakers, because I won't have those on when I'm recording because of feedback. So I use headphones if I want to hear what's happening right now. Um, and then um, I can also switch over to my ATM Mini Pro. Um, so again, right now I'm not using the ATM Mini um, Pro at all. I'm just recording directly to here. So I'm coming through my Rodecaster Pro. I have my host to switch to these two inputs. I'm getting audio levels right here on the meter. And so no worries. I have audio. I don't have to worry about lip sync because I'm feeding audio directly into the HDMI signal. Um, so again, remember I'm converting HDMI to SDI. So I'm feeding it right in here through the HDMI. I'm feeding it, excuse me, into the SDI signal. And then that's going directly into the HyperDeck Mini SDI input. It does not have an HDI input. It only has an HDMI output for watching what's playing on the screen. And again, because I'm set to 4K input, I do not have a monitor right now hooked up for um, displaying 4K. I can use my BenQ monitor um, and I have this, the display port available. So I'll have to convert somehow from um, HDMI to display port in order to get that to work and I'm looking into that right and I use that for my live streaming so I can see all the different devices in my studio on one screen so again look into the BenQ monitor it's not inexpensive it was a little over a thousand dollars it's a 4k um, editing monitor great for doing um, coloring um, and you have different abilities to switch it to different color sources right here different inputs um, it is switched over it's now recording on the disc one, SD one, I can now pull out this disc. It's completely filled and I can hot swap it. So I could put in a new one right now. That's a 64 gigabyte and I have a 256 gig, but I wanted to show you this filling up. So now it's recording on disc one. So if I was to offload this, I should have time to offload this video and plug it right back in if I had my laptop at an event or I could just have another chip ready right here and pop it in there. And it would continue to record on uh, SD slot one until it's filled. And then it would switch over to SD slot two. So, um, so I hope this helps you to be able to know a little bit more how to use the HDMI to SDI 6G converter. Um, and um, I will do just a little kind of outro video here after this and tell you more. First, I want to show you the software that you would download once you get your, your, um, converter your hdmi to sdi 6g converter if that's the one you buy that's for 4k um, they have one set of software for um, converters and you should only have to load the 6g and all those converters that you get are in that category you'll be able to view them from the software and here is what the software looks like so normally when you get in this software let me switch to program view so i can see this full screen 
you're going to see this because I have my converter plugged in to my laptop or you would do your Mac if you're a Macintosh. So this is what happens when you don't have the USB plugged in to the device. You get this question mark screen. So you bring the software up and you'll see this screen. You plug it into your computer and you will be able to see the device. It finds it immediately and you'll be able to um, start messing with the software. Now the HDMI to SDI 6G only has a couple options. You can click on help. And when you first download the software and you plug it into your converter, you're probably gonna get a little uh, bleep that comes up that tells you that you need to upgrade the firmware. So just click on that window, it goes away. And here's what you have. Right here, if you had multiple devices, converters, you'd be able to go right and left to see those. Um, but right now I only have one hooked up um, and only one plugged into my computer through um, the USB cable. Um, and there you go. So here's the software. So I can change the audio settings because I am feeding audio out of my HOSA, which is hooked up to my Rodecaster Pro. So when I switch over to the HOSA, Audio signal, I'll get a signal here. I've raised the volume up to 7.28. If you're gonna hook up to the left channel only and you can feed it AES and EBU, you would use this slider and that's the left channel. And that left channel's right here. You can set the audio levels and you can hit save. Uh, the about screen tells you the same thing about the software. So you can find that up here in help and you can find this down here under about once you open up the software. So we save it and we're out and that's really all you need to use for that software device in order for you to be able to start using it. Now there are also switches on the side so you need to make sure that you read the manual and the back of the device also shows you the different settings. Um, right now, the way I'm using it, I have dip switch one and seven off. Um, I'm still playing with those switches. Um, I'm still learning about them to make sure that I'm doing it right. But again, um, that's a great device for me. So I'm feeding it audio right now. You're listening to my channel one in my ATM mini. I can seamlessly switch over to channel three or channel two, excuse me. And channel two is my camera output being converted to SDI. I'm feeding the converter, which we're talking about today, audio, right and left audio, and that's what you're hearing right now. So I can seamlessly go from the signal coming from my converter into my ATM mini, right back to the signal coming from my HOSA through channel one from right from my Rodecaster Pro, um, bypassing the camera inputs. So again, you have, Two different ways to get audio in your ATM Mini, right? Um, two different styles. You have two mic inputs. So that's two ways in, right, if you counted them. Then you have four HDMI inputs, and each one of those HDMI inputs can carry audio as well. And right on the front of the ATM Mini, you have volume controls. You have volume controls um, for channel one and channel two and their eighth inch. And then you have volume controls for the four inputs on the HDMI inputs as well. So you have all kinds of control on the ATM minis as well as in the software to control volumes and control settings. So I also have some 4K footage that we're gonna link here in the description. This is a 1080p video, but I'm gonna upload some of the 4K footage that I recorded in ProRes um, 422. Um, a link here and it'll be on another video here on my channel to demonstrate EOS R footage directly from the camera into the HyperDeck Mini for your pleasure. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you've had some of your questions answered and I hope that you will continue to subscribe and like these videos and share them with your friends and I hope it helps you with your research. So I'm Keith Bennett, I will see you here in the next video.